everybody, it's Wendy, and today we're going to make a very simple bracelet using products from the Adornable Elements Beads of the Month Club um, Fire Polish Beads. So, first of all, our encouraging word for today is the harder I work, the more luck I seem to have. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson said that, and I think he was a wise man. So, um, if you see these little bracelets here, they were all made with the Adornable Elements Beads of the Month Fire Polish Club. So Adornable Elements Beads of the Month Clubs, um, it's a uh, company that has all different um, clubs that you can join. And whatever you join up for, you get that box of beads every month. So there's the Fire Polish Club, there's the Hot and Trendy Beads Club, there's um, 11 Odelicas, there are uh, gemstones. There's just so many options available to join up with Adornable Elements. So I'm going to have links in the description box below and you can check them out. Um, you also, I also have a coupon code, it is Wendy10, and that will get you 10% off of every club that you want to join. So how um, generous is that of them? Not just one club, if you want to join three clubs, you'll get 10% off of the first month's box or first month's package of every single club that you join. So um, really good deal there. So Wendy 10 and again I will have links in the um, description box below this video. But um, so I looked at this box this month and I will link the unboxing as well if you want to watch that. And all I could see was Christmas <laughs> because it is so green and red. And the um, theme was not Christmas. So I was like, oh gosh, what am I going to do? So I thought, well, you know what? Christmas is coming and what a great gift these little bracelets would be for people. So they're very um, customizable. You can make them in anybody's favorite colors. You can add their favorite charm. Um, you can do whatever you would want to, but they're so quick and easy to make. So you can stack them. So I thought, you know, you could wear all these together or you could take this one out and, you know, not have so much of a Christmas look. Or you could wear just the red ones. You could wear just the green ones. So, um, yeah, very, very versatile little set of bracelets. So how cool would it be to make a bunch of these up and give to somebody? They could wear them stacking. Um, they really are cute when you put them on and stack them on your wrist. So I can't really button them right now because um, they are lobsters and I can't do that by myself, unfortunately. I need Chris to help me. But, um, you know, if you stacked all the red ones, I mean, how cute would this be? Just, you know, stacking little bracelets right there. So anyway, um, we're going to make one today. I'm gonna to show you exactly how I did it. Now, all of these are made exactly the same way, only using different beads and components. Um, so, you know, I used a ring on some of them. I used a connector on some of them. Um, that's pretty much it. This one is just a heart-shaped ring. Um, so they're all made exactly the same. Uh, just, you know, different beads, different things. I've hung different little charms in the middle. So let me get these out of the way. And we are going to make... So these were my favorite beads in the box this month. These are some beautiful fire polish rondelles. And they're in like a deep, deep emerald color. It's hard to see the emerald. There you can kind of see it. I'm actually outside on my back porch um, <laughs> on the lanai. That's what they call them here in Florida, lanai. So it's very fancy. But really, it's just the screened-in back porch. <laughs> um, but I am going to use these. I thought these beads were just absolutely beautiful. So let me separate all this out here. I'm sorry I have everything kind of mushed together um, because I had to carry it out here to the back porch. All right, there we go. Okay, so these are super simple to make. If you want to make them, you're going to need the beads of your choice. You are going to need, I am using seven strand um, satin gold. This is bead stringing wire. And I need two pieces of it. And I cut mine a little bit longer than I, I need to, I know, but I'm always afraid I'm not gonna have enough. So I cut about eight or nine inches um, per side. And then the leftovers I keep because you can use them in th with smaller things or with tassels or something like that. So 
you need two pieces of bead stringing wire. You need the beads of your choice. You're going to need a few ball head pins. I have these um, really cute little fancy jump rings. You don't have to have these. You can use any jump rings you have. But I have two, four, six, seven of them. I have four five millimeter wire guardians. There they are. I have four two by two crimp tubes. I have a lobster clasp and I have this beautiful Swarovski connector. So this was in the box this month with the fire polish beads. Isn't it gorgeous? Okay. And then of course I have my jewelry making tools. So that's what you're going to need if you want to create the same necklace as me. So the first thing, or ear, bracelet, goodness, I'm going necklace, earrings, bracelet. <laughs> okay. And you're going to need your tools. I think I said that, but definitely your crimping pliers as well. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is scoot this out of the way, and I am going to um, hook my pieces of bead stringing wire onto my connector here. So in doing that, I'm going to take my crimp bead, put it on my wire, and then use my little wire guardian. I'm going up with my wire through the first channel, across the top, and down through the second channel. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and insert this right onto my component. And then I'm just going to run the wire back through my crimp bead, the other side of the wire. Now you could hook this on with jump rings if you wanted to. You don't have to hook it directly on like this. I just like to because my wrist is really tiny and I like to be able to use as many beads as I can, so I do that. Now I'm going to take my crimpers and close in that wire guard a little bit. I just like to do that. I feel like it makes it neater looking. And then you want to take your wires, make sure they're not crossed. I don't think mine are. They kind of look like they were for a second. And if you'll see in your crimping plier, there is a divot here in the back. We're going to put the crimp right into that divot pulling everything tight, making sure the wires are not crossed. Actually, I think they may be. There we go. Now they're not. And I'm just going to crimp down firmly. And if you'll see, it makes two little channels and one wire goes into each channel. Okay. And then we're going to rotate our pliers vertically, or rotate this crimp vertically and close it in one of these little things here. Okay, now there are three sizes of these. It's kind of funny, I saw somebody the other day do it in each one saying that it was gonna make it like a bead shape. It really doesn't. Um, the reason that there are three of these sized little things are for the different sizes of crimp tubes or beads you may use. So you can put it in all three. It's not going to make it rounded like a bead. It's just going to fold it over. <laughs> so don't kid yourself there. It would be nice, but it doesn't. All right. Now I'm going to do one of the small fire polish beads first. Now these are a little tricky to get through these two tails, but I like to try to put it through the both of the tails if I can. So that one did go pretty easily. Then I'm going to do two of the rondelles. I may even do three. Let me see. Let me get these through here. I like to put these beads back up through the tail, and the reason for that is it adds a little extra security. If this would come loose or break somehow, you would have these um, extra wire here through these beads, and it would make it a little more difficult for your bracelet to completely come apart and you to lose all your beads. So that's why I like to do that. It does work. Okay, I'm going to put three, three rondelles on and then a little four millimeter fire polish bead and then three more rondelles. I don't know if you guys can hear like the crickets and everything, but it definitely sounds like fall. <laughs> this morning, I remember the feeling of, or the sounds of when I would get up to go to school. I'm going to lay this one here for size reference. Um, and, you know, you could always hear the, all of the crickets or whatever it is. I don't even know what they are. It's some sort of bunch of bugs. But anyway, they're very loud and they make these noises and it feels kind of crisp in the morning. And even here in Florida, 
we are kind of getting that crisp feeling, but I'm sure you guys can hear those crickets in the background. They aren't really, I hope they're not too disturbing <laughs> for everybody, but it is definitely the sound of fall around here right now. Okay, going to put this one on. And honestly, for August, I'm surprised that it's not more burning hot. People told us horror stories. I expected it to be like really horribly hot here. Um, with it being August, and it's not. It's not bad at all. Right now, it's very comfortable outside. Okay. So, there we have. I'm just trying to make sure. I'm trying to get them as close in length as possible. So, I think that's going to do it for this side. I am going to add the one more little 4 millimeter fire polish bead just because I feel like it makes it look complete. And then, we're going to crimp. And I'm going to crimp this right onto my lobster same way that I have been doing it. So I'm going to put on my crimp tube. Going to come right in here. Go up and over this one. Now there is a crimper, um, the magical crimping pliers that does make your crimp look like a bead. But these are not them. These are just the Zeron regular crimpers. They do not make your beat your crimp look like a bead. <laughs> so going back down through uh, a few of the beads here and the crimp tube. There we go. Okay, I'm going to pull this up and make sure that everything is tight. I don't want to make it stick straight, you know, to where it doesn't have any movement to it. But I do want it to be tight. I don't want there to be extra wire. I'm folding in the wire guard because I just like to do that. I feel like it makes it look better. Now on this end, you can't really tell if your wires are crossed or not. It's okay. Just do the best you can. I'm laying this down in here and crimping. Okay. See, it leaves the two little divots there. The crickets are really loud. I may end up having to go inside to film this video. I was kind of hoping that I could stay out here, but they are super loud. <laughs> I don't know if they're crickets or I think they might be like locusts or something, but anyway. All right, so there is our one side. Now we're just going to do the same thing on the other side. String it exactly the same. So again, taking my crimp. Going up and over my wire guard. Gonna slide on my little connector. And I know I don't have to put the crimp on there when I do, but I just like to, I don't know. So going right up into the ring on my connector. And then I'm just going to slide my crimp back through so it goes down both wires here. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to take my um, crimpers and bend my wire guardian in to where it touches. And then I'm just going to try again and make sure that my wires are not crossed on this side. Since I can, since it's easy to see, I'm going to lay this in the crimper and crimp down. Okay? Turning it vertically, closing that crimp up. And we're going to string this side exactly the same way as we strung the other side. So go ahead and put on your 4 millimeter fire polish bead. And I am going to make sure that it goes over both tails there. And I'm going to do three rondelles. Two. Again, making sure that they go over each tail. Both tails. These rondelles were so pretty. They had this luster finish on them. I just think they're gorgeous. So there's three. Adding another fire polish bead. Go 
Okay, and I'm gonna repeat that pattern three more times. Okay, so I'm ending with my fire polish bead here, just like on the other end. And I'm gonna crimp exactly the same way. So I'm putting the crimp on my wire guardian up and over, back through the other channel, and then I'm gonna add my ring that my um, lobster is gonna clasp onto right onto the wire guard and go back down through a couple of the beads with the tail and the crimp bead, of course. Pull that tight. Go ahead and Close that wire guard in. I like to do that. I know I've said that like 10 times already, but <laughs> somebody will always be like, why do you do that? I'm like, I don't know. I just like to. I think it makes it look better. Makes it look more finished or something to me. And then we're going to lay down the crimp here in the divot and crimp it. And then turn sideways and close it up. Okay. And we're going to trim our tail. Okay. Now... I've been adding a little extender on the end here, so I've usually been doing five rings. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put all five of these rings on here. These are hard to tell where they open. They do open, but it's hard to tell because they have this kind of hammered finish to them or something. So I'm going to go ahead and link these up. to give us five little I do not know what is making the noise out here there is some animal or something making noise <laughs> so I had to investigate two little white frogs <laughs> just jumped down from the eve of the house over there and landed on the ground and Sadie was going to get them she thought but they're outside the cage, so she can't. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. They were making funny noise. All right. Linking up our last ring here. Now, I like to make a little dangle to put on the end of this. I just think it's cute. And as you can see, on all of these, <laughs> that's what I've done. So we're just going to create a little dangle here. Just one. I don't usually do a whole bunch of them. Just one on the end. I'm just going to do a fire polish uh, four millimeter, then our rondelle, then another four millimeter. We're going to make a wrapped loop. So bend this 90 degrees. I always, always, always make wrapped loops with my um, ball head pins because they're so thin. I just don't feel like the regular loop holds up. We go up and over, so it looks like a little question mark, then rotate our pliers up. And we're gonna come under, and I'm gonna leave that loop open because I'm gonna just insert it right onto here, onto my ring. Okay, just like that. When I have it inserted onto the ring, I'm gonna grab my crimpers. I like to use my crimpers in fine little places like this, and I'm just gonna wrap, making a wrap to loop. Then we are going to trim this off right here, tuck it in, making sure there's no parts that are going to stick out, like hurt anybody's skin or get caught on your clothes. And there we have it. And it is super cute little bracelet. Look at that. Look how cute. Um, so what great gifts these would make. And again, they're stackable. You can layer them. You can give somebody a whole bunch of them <laughs> for a gift. So anyway, I love this fire polish box. I thought it was really pretty. Um, and it got me thinking a little bit about Christmas and, you know, making gifts for people and, and that kind of thing. So yeah, a lot of variety here. Um, room for, you know, customizing it, making it your own. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Check out the um, Adornable Elements Beads of the Month clubs. And um, like I said, I have a coupon code for 10% off of every club you would want to join. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.